Here we have assembled the rafters by inserting the swage sections of the pipe together per directions. Ensure that the pieces are lying flat, then screw the pieces together with tech screws. Drive the tech screw on the side of the pipe where the cover will not touch the screw to avoid abrasion. Align the lower pieces of the rafters to ensure the base plate mounting holes align properly and then tech screw this section. Attach the base plates by bolting through the pipe and the mating piece of the base plate. The hinge of these base plates is in the same direction as the rafter. With the help of a third person, lift the first two rafters into place. Have them hold the rafter as you secure the topmost purlin into place. There are different clamps for different locations on the building. End clamps provide a flush end. Your directions for your particular building will provide exact details of their location for your building. Install the clamps you will use to secure the purlins. Some require installation at the step where the swage pieces of pipe that form the rafter slip together. These seen here can be installed after and are normally for interior pipe rafters. Loosen bolts to allow the purlins to slip through as required.
Measure the rafter to rafter spacing and adjust as required to match the specifications of your building. Once they are located properly, tighten the clamp securely. Add another purlin to prepare for the next rafter to be lifted into place. Secure the purlins together with a tech screw. Ensure the tech screw will not interfere with the cover by driving it on the underside as shown here or the side of the purlin. Also ensure you have your personal protection equipment in place prior to any work. Ensure for end rafters that the purlin does not extend a half inch beyond the end of the rafter. Continue installing the other purlins as defined in your instructions. Ensure that the purlin is properly spaced between the rafters and is level in the location. Then secure the clamps.
Repeat for the remaining purlins in the same manner. Here we will demonstrate how to measure and make the cables for your building if it is so equipped. First measure the span the cable will be securing. Your directions will show you the locations for your particular building. In this example we will be spanning these two rafters. Once you have determined the length required, measure out the cable for half that length and add approximately one foot minimum extra cable to have room for the clamps and thimbles or to wrap around the rafters. Seeing the turnbuckle will be in the middle of this run of cable, we measure out two equal lengths of cable runs that together will span the distance required. Thread the two clamps onto the cable for one end of the cable. Loop the cable back through the clamps to create the looped end of the cable. Place the thimble into the loop and tighten the cable down to hold the thimble in place. Orient the cable so the live end of the cable is touching the saddle of the clamp. The short end or the dead end that supports no load will be on the U-bolt side of the clamp. Securely tighten the clamps. Repeat for the ends required to have a loop. Most likely these loops will interface with a turnbuckle or a clamp. Here we have performed the loop four times, but as you will see, some installations require the cable to be wrapped around the leg and the purlin of the building.
Wrap each dead end of the cable beyond the clamp with duct tape to prevent fraying and to prevent injury from the cable. Here we will show you how to wrap the cable around the rafter and purlin at the attachment points for this cable. We will follow the same guidelines as before but do not need the thimble as here we are wrapping around the rafter. Reserve enough room to get the clamps on. Attach the turnbuckle to the inside cable ends, tying the two cables together. Tighten the turnbuckle snugly. In most cases, there will be multiple cables that will need to be tightened to square the building properly. Reference your instructions for further instruction. For ground anchor installation, determine at which locations the ground anchors will be driven into the ground. Then drive the anchor into the ground. Next, the hardware to attach the anchors to the building will need to be installed. Refer to the ground anchor installations for specifics for the clamp configuration and orientation. Extend the turnbuckle and measure where the hole will need to be drilled in the rafter leg as shown here. Keep in mind, if this was an end wall, the bolt securing the turnbuckle to the leg would have the head closest to the cover to prevent it from damaging the cover. Tighten the turnbuckle snugly, holding the building securely down.